just waiting for them to come in. Right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Are you all happy? Joyful? Filled with the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Let's stand together, shall we? It's wonderful how we come together, but let's just always reflect for a moment. We're here in the presence of Almighty God. We're here because of Jesus. He's made a way through the cross. That's our entry. We're into his kingdom and in his presence. We just say thank you, Lord, for making it possible for us to be together in freedom, freedom in Christ, freedom in our nation for us, Lord. Thank you. And we come and offer ourselves afresh to you this morning. Lord, refill us to overflowing with your presence, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Touch every heart, every mind. Touch every being this morning. Bring your salvation where that's needed. Bring your healing where we need healing. Bring freedom. Set us free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We're going to say together some words from Psalm 145 about exalting the Lord. We'll say them together, shall we? I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Let's joyfully sing. I got a king, it's love and just forever. For he is good, he is above all things. It's love and just forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Give thanks to the Lord, I got a king. Give thanks to the Lord, I got a king. It's love and just forever. For he is good, he is above all things. Love and just forever Sing praise Sing praise With a mighty hand With a mighty hand And outstretched arm It's love and just forever For the life that's been reborn It's love and just forever Sing praise Of God, we will carry on. It's 
you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the risen one. Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. We can see God, you moving, mighty river through the nations, and young and old return to Jesus. Playing wide the heavenly gates, prepare the way of the risen Lord. Join in one song Let the stream flow as one river Wash away our brokenness We see the God to move in Time of Jubilee is coming Young and old will turn to Jesus Bring right to heavenly days Prepare the way the risen Lord So open up the gates And let the music play Let the streets resound with singing Oh, songs that bring your hope And songs that bring your joy Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Lord, we just echo all the words that we've been singing. The joy, the love, the expression. Our streets echoing with praise for God. Lord, how we long for it. But we thank you that you're faithful to all your promises. Loving to all, towards all you have made. First and foremost, Lord, your people. Thank you, Lord. Not only have you, we're part of your creation. Lord, we've been rebirthed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are your children. Yes. Thank you that you're faithful to us. Yes. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to you. And Lord, help us to bring that joy that hope, that expectation once again in our streets, in our neighborhoods, wherever we are. Lord, just let your spirit flow more and more and more. Through us, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, our God. Thank you. Let's be seated, Toby, for a few moments. Thank you. I saw some of you dancing. There was some dancing there, weren't there, Peter? Yeah. Especially the older ones. 
I know, yeah. I know. Good. Good. Still life left. Still life left. Thank you. <laughs> Be careful what you say. When you're, when you're on this platform, oof, <laughs> we have to be careful. Well, welcome, everybody. If you missed the first welcome, and uh, we've got, I think I see one or two new faces. Face, I've forgotten your name now. Ginny and, Gin, and Tommy. Ginny yeah. and Tommy from Haslington. Give them a welcome. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else here for the first time today? Any new, more new faces? Okay. Right. Bless you. Uh, now, there's a lunch, a church lunch, uh, after the service, okay? We'll be getting some instructions from our Marie Claire and Tina on what to do and what not to do, and whose dinner to eat and whose dinner you mustn't eat. <laughs> but, uh, and if you, if you want to stay for lunch and you, you hadn't picked up the message or the notice, um, and I'm seeing lots of food coming in, so I think there could be some spare food, and the little mini Tesco's open uh, up the road. Not promoting Tesco or anything, of course. Yeah, the Lord will provide. The loaves and fishes miracle come to mind. So, Marie Claire and Tina pray over the food before we set about it. Okay, uh, churches together, prayer meeting here tomorrow, 10 o'clock, when we meet with people from other churches where we pray for God's mission to our town and we pray for our councils and our MP and so on, what it makes it good to be in Congleton and, and surrounding areas. So we'll include Haslington, if you like, in our prayers, and Kidsgrove, of course, for, and Macclesfield. Oh, I've forgotten anybody. Middle. That's oh, where I get in trouble. Uh, la last week, uh, I thought it was very moving. Uh, we came to fill the cards in for our prodigals, and I reckon there was at least 100 cards in there. And I went like that, flicked through just like that. And I estimate there were about 700 names on those cards. I think hopefully God knows that we're serious as we, as we pray and we commit uh, to that prayer for those nearest and dearest to us. Um, open Doors uh, prayer meeting this Tuesday at uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, it takes place in the counselling room. Mandy leads us, shows us some pictures and videos of uh, things in different countries so we can pray specifically into particular countries. Do try and come if you're able to, 45 minutes. Uh, there's no sanctuary meeting uh, this coming Tuesday. We'll have a discussion about that. Uh, healing rooms, newsletters there on the table. Uh, thank you for all the alpha leaflets that have been going out. And uh, do uh, I like to put you a picture on the screen? Are you, are you right, John? Can you put us a picture of the? I wrote to the, I put a, an article and an advert in the Congleton Chronicle, and I think we've got a picture. I thought the exciting thing for me was not only to get it up in print. That's Jeff Cutts. Okay, we'll do show you this one first. This is the food bank. Just to let people know, I, you notice the police there. The good news is that Jeff's still here. <laughs> and, uh, but we had the police volunteering to come in and help uh, sorting out the food bank and uh, doing all the stuff. So the word is spreading around, and I think that's really good. The, the police have, a, a, they have one of their surgeries here uh, where people can come in and talk to them and uh, bring their problems and issues. Have you got the other one, John? Right. And the good thing about this one was, I know it's, the print's a bit small, but we I put included the, whole, the first verses for John's Gospel. And uh, they printed, I thought they might delete it, but they printed it all. So those uh, about uh, Jesus being the Word uh, and, uh, and so on. So uh, pray for the Chronicle. Uh, and uh, let's pray that the Word, as the Word goes out, uh, we get a good response. So keep praying. We're coming to uh, our Alpha course coming up in a, a week on Wednesday. Uh, so uh, do keep praying for people to come and to join it. Notice of our church AGM. Uh, don't forget, if you want to attend the AGM and want to have a say in it and vote in it, uh, you need to be a member of the church. If you're not yet a member, there's some membership packs on the oak table. Thank you. And for all life group leaders, there's a meeting at 7 o'clock tonight with... Uh, 
Hans, uh, yeah, Hans Gerhardt, who are leading us. And uh, so do come for seven o'clock. Come a bit earlier so we can start on time. There'll be a cup of tea, a cup of coffee awaiting you. Now, there's a special book. Uh, the Words of Music have been doing their year, end of year um, stock take and things that have not, have, don't want to get too much dust on them on the shelves. Anything that's not sold in the year, they're outside on the tables out there. They're free, okay? If you want to make a donation, there's some fantastic books and uh, do go and have a look uh, as you're getting your food. Afterwards, uh, the books are out there. Uh, word for today, they're on the uh, table at the back for the next three months, Feb, March and April. And also, there's uh, a lot of newsletters from Christian Institute. There's some very challenging issues that we should be aware of as Christians that we should be praying about and supporting their work, uh, that uh, some things happening, even to very young children, what they're doing in uh, indoctrinating and all sorts of things. So there we are. Uh, so bless, bless uh, us for our lunch uh, together and uh, birthdays. It's your mother's birthday. We're going to sing this in Dutch. No, we're not. No, that happened. Peter said we it won't work. Too many syllables. Dutch efficiency. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks, Yvonne. Anybody else got a birthday this coming week? Oh, you're getting all the blessing to yourself. Are you ready? Can you handle it? I'd just like to share an encouragement and also ask you to pray because in every week in the newsletter it says pray for our schools and children's ministry and I just want to give you like a little insight so last week when it says so assemblies Baglorton, Havana, Smallwood like that is God's goodness that in one day those three schools have assemblies at different times and we can go into them one after the other after the other that's God's goodness. And that same day that Chloe can go into a school in the afternoon to do walk through the Bible. And, that in, and then the next week happens to be a different day. We can go in to the different school. And it's God's goodness in knowing the detail of how we can do all that. So we can write an assembly. And that is God's word going into, that might be in one day, 300 children Hallelujah. might be hearing God's word. And they love it. Chloe, don't you love it when we come into your assemblies? They give us big beams and they're like, yeah. We say, what did you hear last week? They're like, that God loves everyone. And that, you know, this is amazing. And then I had this such a blessing this week. I was walking into Aldi and um, this lad calls, hello, miss. And I said, oh, hello. He says, do you remember me? I said, oh, hi, what primary school did you go to? He said, oh, Baglorton. I'm year 10 now, he said. Those Bible lessons, Miss, that was what we got, out, got me out of bed in the morning. That's why I went to school. I was like, wow. And then just all to his mates, oh, look, I'm talking to my friend from primary school, which was me, you know. <laughs> so, oh, do you remember them reenactments, those reenactment things? And then, what's your favourite prayer, Miss? And the carries on. Then these other children, young people, they're not children. They were year 10s, very cool year 10s. But they had been blessed. And so I was like, thank you, God. That's why we do what we do. And I just want to say, so when it says in here to pray for the schools, please pray because those are children who are hearing God's word straight into their lives. So we can't do it without your prayer cover. So thank you so much. And the glory goes to God because it's his word and he speaks through his word. Thank you, Beth. Uh, it's wonderful. And it's, it's good. There's so many things that are going on. And getting the word out through the Chronicle, getting the word out through uh, what used to be the Gideons, uh, yep. open the doors for more Bibles to go out like that. It's, a, it's what God gives us to do. And it's our job to spread the word, and it's God's job to water it 
and we'll see the growth and something good things happening. I think it's really, really important. Uh, every, every morning here at 9 o'clock, uh, we, have a pre we read Word for Today, we have a prayer time, and we always bring those specific schools for that day before the Lord. So be good to make a habit uh, every morning when you're doing, um, saying your prayers or doing your prayers. Remember that particular school on that day. It's, it's really, really important. Hallelujah. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, for, thank you, team, for all you're doing going into the schools. Amen. Children, you're going out to your... Yes, thank you. Going out for your groups. Okay, are you ready? Who's got the box for the offering for the children? Anybody? like to stand Oh, 
Jesus, we have an authority right. as your ambassadors, Amen. carrying the authority of the government of heaven. Amen. And thank you, Lord, that we, with your name, we can speak into situations. Right. We can speak healing. We can speak freedom. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. We know that the enemy can't stand when we mention the name of Jesus. Lord, we hold your name in the highest honor. The name of Jesus. Savior of the world. Risen, ascended, glorified, seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. King of kings, Lord of lords. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is Lord. Against the end. 
city of our God, the holy place. The joy of the encourage us to pray for our schools, for all our children. I mentioned earlier that uh, last week prodigal cards, there's seven, probably 700 names. Those will be some of our children. We thank you, Lord, for the schools. We thank you for our team that go into the schools. We thank you for the open doors to those schools. We pray for them. We pray for all our children, those who've gone out to Sunday school groups. We pray, Lord, that every single one will come to a living faith in you. We thank you for all those who already come to faith and walking as true disciples growing and learning and experiencing more of you, Lord. We pray, we pray over this town and other schools around here, Lord. Thank you that they're open. We pray for all the teachers and the staff. Thank you that they welcome us. Lord, hear our cries, hear our prayers for this, our generation. Forgive us, Lord, where we've neglected reaching out to children. But now, Lord, now, Lord, let this be a season. Singing in the streets that we've, songs that we've sung this morning, words that have spoken, Lord, hear our cries, hear our prayers. Especially in these days, Lord, we pray for all these influences on our children into the schools. Asking them to decide which gender they are. All this sort of stuff, Lord, that's going on. In the name of Jesus, we put that down. Amen. By the grace, mercy of God. Lord, you came to destroy the works of the enemy. We're all your wonderful creation. So, Lord, we pray over our children. We pray over our schools. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we trust in you. We pray, Lord, as we reach out through our Alpha courses, help us, Lord, in our witness, personal witness, to friends, neighbors, family, to introduce them to Jesus.
as the Lord spoke to Joshua, be strong and courageous. I think he said it three or four times. And then at the end of the book of Joshua, Joshua said, choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Can we all say that? We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
life surrendered, filled with his presence, high and lifted up. A sense of his glory surrounding us. Thank you, Lord. That light, that pure light, making us pure white for your blood. We owe all to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Dear God, I thank you so much that we can come to your throne and speak to you, Father, the King of all this world, Lord. We don't have to have an appointment with you. We don't have to do anything special to come to you, Father. You love us. Lord, and even though you accept us as we are, you always come to bring us forward towards you, Father, and closer to your image, Father. Lord, I thank you that we can pray for our communities and the people we love, the people around us, Father, and I thank you that we can come to you with these precious lives around us, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that in your word it says that whatever we pray according to your will, you will answer, Father, and you hear us, and you hear our petitions, Father. We, they do not fall on deaf ears, Lord. So when we reach out to you with our hearts, Father, petitioning for the lives and the souls of our, the people around us, Father, our children and our parents and our brothers and sisters, our families and friends, Lord, and all those people around us that we know and love, and even the people that we've never met, like the children in the schools and the people that drive past us, Father. We can be sure that you are hearing our prayers, Lord, and you are setting armies of angels around, just commissioning them to do their jobs, Father, which is to draw them in. Yeah. Lord, and we might not always come up with the right words, though we try, Father, to draw these people towards you, Father. But we can be sure that you are on the case, Father, and for that I am truly thankful, Father, because it keeps me sane and it keeps me going, Father. So, Lord, I come to you to asking you, Father, to hear my prayer. Please save the souls of these people around us who do not know you. Please work within them in the battles that are going on inside of them that they do not understand, Lord. Father, I pray for a day where I can walk around in my family's homes and all of my community and all the areas around me and see the conversations about you, Father, and how wonderful you are. Lord, but if I don't ever see it, Lord, I trust you, Lord, that when those people go to their grave, somehow you have met with them and brought them to salvation. And I praise your holy name again that I can come to you with my petitions and my prayers. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated, if you're not already sitting. Uh, just before Shane comes to preach, uh, just to share, I didn't hear it, uh, but Linda, uh, Linda Austin was on UCB on when, what, on Thursday. And I think you can tune in. I think if you talk to, to old Jeff here, he'll find some link for you somehow. Uh, but apparently it was an amazing testimony. For half an hour, she was able to share her, how she came to the Lord. And then she was asked at the end uh, to choose a hymn. And she chose Amazing Grace because... Once she was lost and now she's found. And that's a testimony for all of us, isn't it? So uh, the word is going out more and more over the airwaves, in the newspapers, physically, personally into the schools. It's what we're here for. And on television. And on television. Christian TV, Revelation TV. Yep, yeah, thank you. Let's keep it going everywhere. Right, Shane, are you ready? Let's welcome Shane. He's going to bring God's word to us today. Thank you, Shane. Okay, 
Good morning. interesting we had the song from nearly 30 years ago from Martin Smith of Delirious. It's very important the history we have. I talk about it quite a bit to just reflect back on your own walk with God, however long or short that's been, to develop that testimony that we've heard testimony shared and like that boy from year 10 who came up to Beth, you know, a lot of us, you know, have, have done maybe our little stint with, with schools and youth work, whether that's your sort of main calling or whether it's a season. And I myself have spent time in various schools, assemblies, and, you know, you do, teenagers come up now and it's like, oh, yeah, you were the one who wore the tea towel and did the, the <laughs> open the book stuff. And I was like, yeah, exactly. And you think, I was, you know, we do that stuff because if it gets the word of God into people, if it stays with them, you know, there's a load about school I'm sure they wouldn't remember, but it's interesting they remember, well, you did that. You came in. Somebody told me. <laughs> I think testimony is very important. And as we were coming into this new year, I always like to take time over the sort of Christmas New Year time and, and I think it's a good time to sort of take stock of um, the year that's passed, looking towards the year ahead. And I just like to give thanks to God. I, I, I go on a long walk usually, just, just me, just take my Bible, some snacks, drinks, whatever, and I just go and I just walk, walk and walk and walk. And I like to sit down at times with my word, just get into it and ask God what he wants to say to me um, for the year ahead. I thank him for what's, what's past. And um, I really felt he was speaking to me, really to start the year off with very much a sort of a, almost a reset, a back to basics kind of approach to the core simplicity of a lot of his word. You know, there's, there's great complexities to sort of life, to humans, to the interactions we have, but there's actually a really pure, basic simplicity to actually quite a lot of God's word and what he actually asks of us, you know? And what, one of the things, it just sort of came to me that, you know, if you look all throughout the word, there's a very simple formula that breeds a very successful walk of faith. And that is sort of three things that tie together. It's to do what God says. It's to do it in an accurate way, according to his instruction. And it's to do it in a timely manner. So it's to do what he says when he says, and how he says. Yet, if, if any of those components are off, <clears throat> things can go a bit awry. You know, but a lot of what we've even talked about and touched on this morning so far has come from relationship. You know, when you're in that place of relationship, if you look throughout history, whether it's reading of the people and events of the Bible, or whether it's more recent history of maybe the last couple of centuries, the most successful people who really fulfilled their godly call always talk of a very deep relationship with God. It's a daily walk. It's just as you breathe and as you move around, it's that intimacy with God. It's not a one-time thing, it's a regular thing, it's a lifestyle. Amen. Trying to move with God, and we have his Holy Spirit to do that. Trying to just be discerning, listening for, what are you doing, Holy Spirit? What are you saying? Hmm. 
you know, the Bible talks about faith coming from hearing. And the main way to hear is to spend time with someone. You know, we have God's word, so you can read the word of God. But this word comes to life with the Holy Spirit. So God's given us this word, but not just like a textbook that's just words on a page. It's words that then come to life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit witnesses those words into your spirit, which then sort of soak into you, into your mind, your soul, into your being. And all of that sort of mixes together so that you can then use this word as a foundation, as a general foundation, because there's general principle of who God is, what he's asking of you, what he's done, what he will do. But then there's the more specific personal words that come to you as, a, as an individual, as a child of God. And that's the beauty of the word. That's what he's calling. Faith comes by hearing. But if we never position ourselves in that place, the hearing will be difficult. And if the hearing is difficult, we won't have heard what he said. Whether we haven't caught any of it or whether we only caught part of it. And if we've not heard the way in which he wants something completed, we might not put the right things in place. We might think, oh, I've heard what God wants. I reckon we do it this way. But more often than not, it's highly likely that his way and his plan is quite different than the way we might try and work it out. So we could hear the word, oh great, but if we run off out of relationship and out of that place, we might start to build it with our building blocks and not God's. And then we're building a dead work. We're building a work that isn't a good godly work, even though it's come from an initial word. And that's somewhat of the tightrope to some degree. So it's the patience, it's the resting in God, it's the time, right, I want to hear you, God. Right, now I've heard you, let me just take that word to myself. Like Mary, it said that, you know, what was spoken to her, she sort of pondered on it, she took it to heart, she took it to herself. She kind of chewed it over and waited on it. We're to do that, you know. <laughs> We're to be people of, of presence, people in his presence, so that we hear what he says. We know the battle plan, like Joshua taking Jericho, you know, under Moses he'd seen, you know, a man of action. It could have been, right guys, get your weapons, tool up, it's a kind of full on assault, we're going to smash this wall down. That might have been the plan but it wasn't so if we just hear oh we're going to take Jericho right we're going to have to smash these walls down if he hadn't rested in the place of presence he wouldn't have caught the battle plan and the strategy Gideon taking the Midianites actually in the end it was just take your little pots light them up and make some noise and smash them that was it that was the plan ludicrous plans but when they're godly inspired plans powered by the Holy Spirit they work whereas if either of those guys had tried to run off out of the place of presence without the clear instruction it would have probably been a very different version of events and timing we need to hear what he has said we need the strategy. And by the way, sometimes the strategy might just only be the first stepping stone. He's unlikely to give you, based on my opinion and my experience, he's unlikely to give you the full battle plan strategy a lot of the times. It might just be 
one or two little bits, even if it's a little crumb of a step that he gives you, follow that breadcrumb to the next part of his plan. Might just be one little bit. Don't worry about all that you don't know. Just trust in him who does know and take that step. And the more you take those steps, the more it will become easier the next time to take the step because you've built up history and testimony. Anyone in your life now, if you have anyone that you trust, it's likely that it's someone you've known for a long time, you've spent good, intimate, quality time with, and they're trustworthy. You can trust because it's like, yes, they're trustworthy. And they've shown that time and time and time again. Because someone who's unreliable and not trustworthy, time will root that out. Yeah? Time roots out many things, doesn't it? You know? Not everything has a quality with time. <laughs> so it's a good rule of thumb. And you can do that with God. That relationship is available. Do what he says. Do it in an accurate way according to his instruction. Step by step input with the Holy Spirit. He'll instruct you. And do it in a timely manner. Timing too early or too late could miss it crucial windows of opportunity sometimes there was a man named Noah who God spoke to and he started to talk to him about very strange things he told him to build something called an ark for something coming that was called rain that had never happened before. <laughs> you know, if we go to Genesis 6, verse 22, we read one short little verse. After God had spoken to Noah, it simply says, Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did. Thus Noah did, according to all that God commanded him, so he did. That there is an absolutely essential piece of the formula that you can just take to yourself and purpose in your heart, yes, Lord, you speak to me, and I will do all according to what you've said. Noah makes it into what we sort of call the Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11. And I'm going to take you to verse 7 in Hebrews 11. It says something very telling of Noah. It says, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, he moved with godly fear. He prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. A couple of key elements there. He was divinely warned. This is a man who had ear to God from relationship. And this was before the Holy Spirit lived within people as well. So I think it's even more incredible to read of the Old Testament events. It's incredible enough, any event. But for people who didn't have the Holy Spirit residing in them, we only read of the Holy Spirit coming upon a person for a specific moment or purpose or, or time in the Old Testament. So to hear God so directly, so clearly, and to have that intimacy relationship. You know, Noah was given very specific instruction about this strange thing he was asked to do for this unseen event. But he knew enough to trust God and to do exactly what he'd said. And I'm sure when that
flood hit and that rain came, he was glad he followed the instructions. He didn't skip a few steps. He built that ark exactly as instructed. He did all that God commanded of him. You can take that scripture down now. You know, anyone who knows me knows that I quite like words and language. <clears throat> and um, I would encourage you, um, especially if you've been a Christian a while, if, you, if you've at least read your Bible maybe once or twice through and you're somewhat familiar with a lot of the Word of God, start to take some maybe of the chunks that really you would call your favourite bits, the bits that maybe have spoken to you a bit more. Dive into the Greek or the Hebrew, whatever the original language is. Start to unpick it because you'd be surprised what comes out. The richness, it's, it's like mining for sort of gold or sort of, you know, like precious material. It's just putting in a bit more effort, just like, actually, Lord, show me deeper layers. We're not adding to it. We're not taking away. We're not changing. We're looking at the richness that's buried below layers. You know, because those languages, Greek and Hebrew, are, are so rich. So much is lost by just the English word sometimes. And, you know, in, in, in Genesis 6, when it says about Noah did all that God commanded him, it's very interesting if you just dive into the word commanded. Because... We would understand, okay, a command. We would all have a general understanding of command. Yes, it's, it's an order. It's an instruction. But there's also a word in that which is to enjoin, which is another word for sort of an instruction, but it also carries a sense of urging somebody. To do something. You know, a lot of the times when God is speaking, there's an urgency to what's being said. If he's speaking to us, he's looking for us to go, yes. And we incline our ear. We take it seriously that he's speaking to us. And when he's spoken, well, we take the time to listen fully but then when he's spoken, it's taking it seriously with the urgency of whatever it is he said. Because a lot of the time, there is very timely moments. And if we miss that timing, if we jump the gun and we're too early or we're too late, that knocks the whole game of chess out of action a bit. The pieces all need to move very strategically at exactly the right moment. Which is why sometimes I think, just me personally, he doesn't show me necessarily a lot of the way forward because I'd maybe think, oh, yeah, okay, if I see too much, that's how we get there. Sometimes it's helpful to see and know less, just know the little bit to start with and do that bit. So it's not, don't feel as if he's holding out on you the enemy might try and whisper that, oh, God's holding out on you. Like he did with Adam and Eve, actually. Oh, surely God didn't say, don't, don't eat that fruit. He's holding out on you. Be like him. Break the word he said. Do what you want to do. You know what I mean? It's subtle sometimes, but your own little thoughts can be like, hang on. How come I don't seem to know that much? What's the last little bit he said to you? It may be a case that actually it doesn't feel like he's saying much of anything. Maybe it might just feel like you're walking, but you feel peaceful in life. You feel a contentment with the Lord, and you simply say, Hey, Lord, I'll just walk with you. And when you've got an assignment for me, just present that to me. Let me just catch what you're saying. Let me just walk in peace. I'll be in your word. I'll be giving you thanks. I'll be a worshipper. Make sure you're part of a good church fellowship. Plug into, you know, Bible study groups, home groups, fellowships. Go out on activity days, eat together, you know. Just have the sort of whole package 
of faith. It's important who we fellowship with. Because that can help your hearing and your understanding. Because the likelihood is God will have nudged other people around you with a similar thing. And you start to catch a bit of a vision together. Oh yeah, God did that. Yeah, I heard that. Or maybe you've got one bit and someone else has a similar bit and together it's like, ah, now those pieces make sense. My bit didn't quite make complete sense on its own. This bit didn't. But together you have a witness. And then that encourages you even more because, oh, now there's two or three of us that have caught the same kind of same kind of sense of what he's saying, what he's doing. Okay, now let's take this back to the altar. When we read about Abraham, it says many times, you know, he built an altar or he went back to a place where there was an altar where he previously just praised God, worshipped God, waited upon him. Come in and thank him, but also take time to just quiet yourself and listen to him. Build your altar. <coughs> just be before the Lord. Worship him. I want to look a little bit at Abraham, actually. So I want to take you to Genesis 15. I want to take you to verse 6. <laughs> Again, just one little verse. This is before God had actually um, quite named him Abraham. It's originally Abram. But it said of Abraham. See, th this, this chapter, chapter 15, as we call it, is very key for Abraham receiving a lot of promise. You know, he's waiting for this promised son who looks impossible. <laughs> and God is basically talking about the amazing promises of destiny right into eternity that he has for Abraham. And after being told these mind-blowing, wonderful things, it simply says of Abraham, he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. So Abraham believed in the Lord and then the Lord accounted it to Abraham for righteousness. Yeah, we, we, we can sort of run around wondering, oh, how, how do I live in a righteous way? How do I live in a godly way? Believe in the Lord. You know, you could think, oh, I need to do all these things, this, that or the other. To, to live righteously. And living righteously is simply just walking your walk according to God's instruction. You know, when it talks about people who were blameless, who were perfect, who were righteous, that simply means those who put themselves into a place of relationship and just believed the word. And of course, Abraham didn't have this book. He was being written in this book. So again, men and women without the Holy Spirit living within them, with, with little to none of the word of God, no great local churches to just go to, no online sermons to tap into as they're traveling. You know what I mean? <laughs> Strip those away and think, Oof, that's that's tougher. But such was the desire of these people to be in relationship with God that they heard so clearly, so clearly. Even Abraham's like negotiation with God over Sodom and Gomorrah. I think that dialogue's fascinating. We're not gonna bring it up, but like, just, it's just like, oh, what if there's only 50 righteous people? 45, 40, 30, and notches all the way down to 10. I just love that dialogue, it's like, wow. This, this, is, this is what can happen to hear so clearly God's heart and God's instruction. And God even within the Trinity and amongst the angels talking, shall we share with Abraham this next bit? I think that's amazing. It's like God's like, 
assessing this man and actually yes this man is faithful and trustworthy doesn't mean he hasn't made mistakes you won't find anyone who hasn't made mistakes and i think it's amazing some of these men like we read about make huge mistakes like history altering mistakes yeah but still they've purposed their heart towards god to be in relationship to walk with him and if anything's gone out of line to get quickly back on the right track with him and that's a key thing and that's a part of a timing if you've heard like when the prophet came to David and said, you know, told him the story about the man who was being unfair and da 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 da. And then David's like, that's horrible. And Nathan's like, that's you. That's you, David. You know, David immediately wanted to get right with the Lord. See? Where is your heart's purpose towards? Where have you set your compass for life? Upon what and whom are you standing? What's your foundation? You know, if you make the word of God your foundation, make it the cry of your heart to live in relationship with God, being fed by this word, being nurtured by the Holy Spirit, allowing him to guide you, to bring the word to life. And... I personally feel that there's there's certain ways that I know when God is really speaking to me about something. There'll be little specific ways he does things for me, whether it's how he makes me feel about certain things or little things that he'll show me. Like there's a little specific number that pops up at very crucial times that's very personal to me, that it's like he's given me this as a little, yes, that's me. There's specific signs in nature that God speaks to me through. And it just gives weight. It's almost like, you know, that ring that the king wears and he stamps it into the hot wax to seal. Like, I've written this. That's me speaking. This is your mission now. This is the message I've got for you now. Run with that one. And that's individual, but also corporately, of course. But if everyone's got their own individual message correctly, the corporate message of the church will all fit together. All those messages, all those mandates and purposes and missions, all those bespoke, tailor-made, specific callings for every single one of us will all line up perfectly. Because we've all purposed that we will do all according to what God has said. We will do it in the manner in which he's instructed us and we'll do it in the timing that he's given us. Crucial points, very basic in one sense, but very significant and prominent in another way, as so much of the scripture is. Abraham believed in the Lord. You know, it's interesting. I was preparing this and I had this scripture written down. And um, just this last week, um, my son, who is incidentally called Noah, um, he's eight. And just on the way to school, I was driving to school in the car, and um, he just, he mentioned a, a family member of ours and says, you know, do they believe in God? <laughs> And um, they're, they're, they're not a Christian, this particular person. But I, I thought, having looked at this scripture and studied the word believe, I said, well, actually, no. So, well, first of all, we, my wife and I took the, the easy option, which was, you'd have to ask them. You ask them that question, and we'll stand far away <laughs> when you ask that question. Yeah, we know. We got wisdom. But um, I said to him, just because someone says they believe in God, that doesn't make you a Christian. The devil believes in God. Every single angel who fell from heaven, 
every demon believes in God. And they would seem to know the word of God in a way that might put a lot of us to shame. <laughs> they know the word of God. They know the name. They definitely believe in God. So believe must mean something a little bit differently than we might think. Which if we dive into it, we see some aspects of it that differentiate what is being required. Because anyone really can, I mean a lot of people you might meet, you know, Christian, they'd be like, oh yeah, I, be I, I believe in God. I believe in something bigger. You might get that kind of thing. But then it's like to sort of press that a bit like, okay, so what, what does that mean for you? Because anyone can say, oh, I believe in God. Well, have you received Jesus as Lord? Are you living your life according to the word of God? Is it your purpose to live out the plan God has for you? It's very different. Let me just look at believe. <laughs> Believing in the Lord is, is talking about faithfulness in the Lord. It's talking about a firmness. It's talking about a certainty. It's talking about being steadfast. It's talking about being permanent. It's talking about trust. See all that you would miss by just reading, and he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Gives you the keys. What does that mean, believe in the Lord? You can put those words in the place of it. And Abraham was faithful in the Lord. Abraham was firm in the Lord. He was certain in the Lord. He was steadfast in the Lord. He was permanent in the Lord. There's a tenacity there. There's an endurance. Because God's promise is that the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Amen. Yeah. You stand firmly, steadfast in him. You can go up against giants because you've got his instruction and his timing. And the Holy Spirit will guide that stone right into the enemy's forehead. And clear the way for you. Trust. He trusted in the Lord. You see the richness of flavour. That really separates out what believe means. From just someone, oh, I believe in God. Okay. Do you trust in God? Is he your certainty, the firmness? We sang about hope and joy. Do you have that in the Lord? And another thing in believed, it also carries a sense of, remarkably, to go to the right hand of. And then... As I looked at that, I'm just going to read your scripture, it's not going to come up. As I thought of that to go to the right hand of, I thought, ooh, the scripture about the right hand of God. And right at the end of Psalm 16, verse 11, this is David writing a psalm. It says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So interesting, he believed in the Lord. Within that word is a sense of to go to the right hand of. And later we have a scripture where David is talking about at the right hand of the Lord are pleasures forevermore. And also there's a very important chap who sits at the right hand of God. Jesus. Jesus. You see what I mean? When you get into your word... And when you dive into it, these things link. But you see, that one from Psalm 16, the Holy Spirit brought that out for me because I'd previously read it. If I hadn't eaten the food, it wouldn't be able to nourish me and sustain me in the same way. I didn't know it was Psalm 16 off the top of my head. Sometimes you know you reference, sometimes you have to check it out. But it's like, oh, I know it's in there. I know I've read that. I'll find that. You know what I mean? It's there because you've nourished yourself on it. It all ties in. 
So I, I just really felt like that was the essence of, of the word today, to just strip a lot back to really the basics. Strip it back to the basics. Be like Noah and Abraham, those who heard God. And of Noah, it said he moved with, with fear, godly fear. That fear is a reverence. It's recognising this is God speaking. I'm going to treat it with importance and significance. I'm going to take it to heart and I'm going to do it. Because God's looking for people who have heard what he has said. If we don't hear what he said, and if we don't have the spiritual insight, what he's wanting to show us, we won't be able to tackle all of the things that are going on in the world. Steve's touched on just a few of them. I've spent some of last year preaching some challenging messages about some things that are going on at a global level. And the things that are going on tie into the end times. There's some very challenging things that the word of God tells us about the end times chapter. And you need to be people who are well informed. You need to be people who look beyond just what's spoon fed you by the world, by the mainstream media, by its global agenda. You need to see it, but then peer back this curtain with God's spiritual insight, just like Elisha. He saw the army, but then he had spiritual eyes to see God's army that was fighting for him. We have that insight. We have the word of God, we have the spirit of God, and we have divine insight. We can have divine revelation and divine insight to overcome whatever it is that comes against us. But that's what God's looking for. He's looking for people who will truly be able to hear what he said, hear the instruction he's giving them, and put it into place accurately and in a timely manner so that we can all complete our part of this amazing eternal jigsaw of God's plan to bring God's kingdom here to this earth now and to pave the way into eternity. Every single one of you matters for that plan. Every single one of you is important. And if you've not made a decision for Jesus this very moment today, you can say, yes, Lord, I want to hear you. I want what this guy is talking about. I want this presence in my life. I want to know that I'm safe and secure in your love. Everyone is welcome in God's kingdom. God bless you. Thank you, Shane. <clears throat> uh, that invitation to know God, if you're not yet, you can believe in him, but if you've never yet surrendered totally your life to him, there'll be an opportunity, if you wish to, do that uh, after the service. Come and uh, speak to myself or to Shane or Jeff here. We'll lead you in that prayer that will transform your life. Amen. If you believe, if you trust in God with all your heart. Let's stand together. Uh, thanks, Peter and Band are going to lead us in our closing song. If you've got children, grandchildren, anybody you're responsible for, could you go and collect them, please? Thank you.
Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Your word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. And Psalm 127 says, unless the Lord builds the house, the people labor in vain. The Bible tells us that we are a temple for the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you'll fill us, keep us in step with you. Let your word permeate, or as the word for today has been saying, percolate 
our very beings. That we walk in step with you, Lord. Thank you for being with us today. As we go from here, Lord, we remain here enjoying lunch together. Let us be in the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, let me see if there's any special instructions, Marie Claire. Right, teas and coffees in the social room. Try and clear the hall and then come back in 20 minutes for sharing lunch together. And don't forget, you're welcome to stay. Oh, right. 